We are made to understand that until identity is recovered, your family remains under satanic embargo. You remain in fear. You remain in ignorance. And you torture everyone in your house. Why? You're under limits. Your eyes cannot see what God has in store for you, in store for your family. The spiritual world is the real world. In fact, the blessings of the spiritual is what authenticates what we see in the physical. Many are only driven by what they see in the physical. No. The physical does not control the spiritual, but rather it's the spiritual that controls the physical. Ephesians 1, 3, it says, God has blessed us with all manner of spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. The heavenly places is our real spiritual habitat. That is where we are operating from. That is the point of control of every life, every family, every destiny. So if you are not spiritual, if you are not prayerful, if you are not giving to the world, the truth is you may suffer lack. Your family will suffer lack. You will be holding everybody responsible for the reason why things are not working for your family. But the moment identity is discovered, authority is restored. Identity determines possibilities. Identity determines opportunity. Identity determines authority. Identity fuels faith. Faith is not working because you are doing trial and error. Will it work? Will it not work? In this service, we are looking at break the limits over your family through your mind and your imagination. Our mind is the center of creation. Whatever you can see in your mind, God can do in your life, God can't do in your family. Every breakthrough that will take place in your family will first of all occur in your mind and in your imagination. Every breakthrough that will take place in your life, in your family, will first of all exist in your mind and in your imagination. For God to change your family situation, it will first of all change your imagination. It will change your perception. Change the way you think. Change the way you reason. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision. Let's read together. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision. It is one thing to be a father and a mother but it's more dangerous to be a visionless father and a visionless mother. Very dangerous. When you are visionless, everybody in the house suffers. 
Your family is powered by your vision. Your family flourish by your imagination. Your vision, your imagination is what sets the pace for your family destination. They may be here now, but if they must leave this place to another place, something new must enter. So what you see with your inner eye is what determines what you get. It's what determines what you get. No family can break through with a narrow mind. No father, no mother can secure breakthrough for the family with a narrow mind. God will bless your family according to your thinking. The acts of God in our family is limited by our thoughts, by our imagination. I know some people have been thinking now that it's prayer, prayer, first service, prayer, second service, prayer. Many fail in prayer. Poor imagination. So every blessing your family enjoys is limited by your mind. So if you enlarge your mind, you enlarge your imagination, enlarge your vision, you are creating doors for it to flow. As a man thinketh in his heart. So you don't need to bother about some people's behavior. It's their nature. And you know your nature determines your future. And your mind contributes to your nature. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's why before God will change anything around you and your family, he will first of all change your mind. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Let me say this. If I don't have a vision for you to be blessed, I'm suffering everybody that you are seeing here. Why? It's not in my vision. Because God works with the vision. Who is here now? Is it me or Yedeko? Is it me or Yedeko? So, what I see God do, that's what he will do. So, I must begin to see good things. Very soon, say with me, very soon, very soon. We will have problem of parking space. Yeah. Did you understand what I said? Yeah. Why? I'm seeing cars. Very soon, Security may not be able to control traffic. They will go and beg road safety to come. You may not understand what I'm saying. It has worked before. When I was in Rayfield, the total cars was um, 36. I say 36. I said, then do or say, I said, God forbid. Before we know what's happening, we now block two roads. We block this one and block the other one. So one day they invited me in, uh, to the, the Minister of Environment. They said, Pastor, uh, you know you're a man of God, uh, but we just want to appeal to you. Your members are blocking road. I said, do you like poverty? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk. Now I asked him, on Friday, don't you block road? Have you invited them? I say, if you come again. 
They didn't come again. No. They didn't come again. So later, one of the commissioners said, Pastor, they, they brought your matter in our meeting. I said, what did they say? A thief? He said, no. They said that uh, your members are blocking road. I said, tell them it's a good thing that God is blessing the people. I came to bless the people in Rayfield and they are buying cars and blocking every road on Sunday. The man burst into laughter. Now, I want to tell you this. For you and your family, you will not suffer limitation. <laughs> Whatever power vowed to keep you on the same spot, I invoke the grace of Oyeriko against them. <laughs> Where there is no vision, that people perish. As a father, as a mother, you are not just papa and mama. You are giving leadership status by visionary projection. So you must decide where your family will be the next five years, the next ten years. You must think excellence for your children. You must not allow them to suffer mediocrity. A mediocre father will give birth to a mediocre children. Where there is no vision. I want to say to you, If you must break the limits over your family, you must be tired of where your family is now. God said you have encompassed this mountain long enough. Man, it's time to turn. It's time to turn. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. That my son that was around yesterday that we dedicated the car. Let me just share the testimony. The wife just got angry and she's tired. He's tired of this house, tired of this car. In fact, I'm packing my things. The young man just came. Pastor, you know, not only you in the hill. I just drove and followed him. I said, Oh, choose one car and house. Which one should be first? He said, House. I said, and God save you today. Which one would be better for landlord to increase your house rent from 500 to 1.5 million than for you to finish this house and buy a car? Which one is better? He said to finish this house. I said, God bless you. So nothing do you. No winch they do you. Yeah, okay. Your head is correct. Now they have finished the house. And yes, uh, today is her birthday. He now bought that car and delivered it to her. If your family must go forward, you must obey what we call the law of priority. Many families are not doing well because uh, they want to do what everybody is doing. Hear me, we are not doing competition. Baba. You buy, I buy. You wear, I wear. For where? If we compare ourselves with ourselves, we are not wise. It's a sign you don't have vision. You are just follow, doing follow, follow. Follow, follow. And you know that's what is raining in church. I remember one of my friends, Engineer uh, Deleke. The wife just all of a sudden said, I'm not coming to church again. What's the problem? She has seen other dickness. They are not using Jeep. So she said the husband must buy Jeep. So he called me. He said, Pastor, see you. I don't know what you don't enter your head. Though. He said, no, no, Jeep. Oh. So I now call her. Are you okay? He said, Pastor, I'm very okay. 
I'm very okay. So by the time we finished talking, I told the man, don't buy. But when you will buy, let me know. So he didn't buy. So she still, after the initial gra gra, she still come church. Now, on her birthday, and I said, well, Pastor, what do you think? I said, buy her tear leather. Camry 2009. That was 2009. So, he bought the car, went and parked it in another place. He just snapped it and sent it to me and said, see this car? I said, your hair correct. <laughs> so, on her birthday, they just drove the car Give her the particulars, give her the key, and say, This is your car. Tokumbo Jeep and Tia Leather 2009 Camry. Which one, senior? <laughs> no, women, tell me. Which one, senior? <laughs> Should I tell you something? Don't run on an Amara man's track, run your own vision your family with your own vision. Power your family with your own vision. You are not doing because others are doing. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Ah, we are not doing competition. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. The future is waiting for everybody. Little by little you are coming. You are coming in style. You may not be where you ought to be now, but you are no longer you where you used to be. Every change of level, every limit that God will break in your family will first of all allow you to capture the picture. Say with me, picture. That's why you need to understand the function of your mind in imagining. God said in uh, Genesis 11 and verse 6, he said, this they have begun to imagine. He said, and nothing, say with me, nothing shall be restrained from them. This they have begun to imagine. This they have begun to imagine and nothing shall be restrained from them. Now, the pictures of the mind, they are produced by words. They are produced by words. Words paint pictures. Word paints pictures in our mind, which now form the basis of our imagination. And our imagination sets the pace. For our new levels, for our new breakthroughs, new open doors. That's why our imagination is our inner eye. Say with me, my inner eye. No wonder Paul prayed the prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened so that you will know the hope of his calling. You will know the hope. So every breakthrough any family will experience, the father and the mother must first of all have to break in. Say with me, break in. You break in with your imagination. You break in. You break in. Because whatever you have not been able to break into, you cannot break through. You must, it must break into your imagination before you break through it. If you can't see it inside, it can't take place outside. So our imagination... Is what translates into physical realities. Our imagination. 
translates into physical realities. If you see obstacles in your mind, you will see obstacles in reality. If you see obstacles in your mind, the place is hard. Nobody like my face. Do I need you to like my face? It's not important. In fact, I don't even want you to like my face. I want to carry picture of what I want to see in my future. That's why every family destiny is locked up in the heart of the father and the mother. God has put all, say with me, all. All the breakthroughs that will take place in our family, in our imagination. The part of the jaws is like a shiny light. A shiny brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. I will show you one of my secrets today. I think in pictures. I think in pictures. Anything I think, I write them down. As I write them down, I print them out. Because whatever can be formed in your imagination will enter your subconscious. The moment it enters your subconscious, it becomes a practical, physical reality. Every breakthrough that will take place in your life, in your family, God has already put it in your imagination. So, as your information base is growing, your imagination base is enlarging. So, you are growing from strength to strength. From favor to favor. From height to height. From blessing to blessing. From finance to finance. You can't attract into your life what you have not taught in your mind. In terms of breakthrough. Every breakthrough that will take place in our life is already in our imagination. So the realm of imagination is the realm of all things are possible. So if you don't see it possible, it can never be possible. If you see it possible, <laughs> you will hear the other parts very soon. Lack is in your mind because you think lack. That's why you will just say, I don't have. I'm saying the truth. I don't have. You will never have. Remember you were singing a song the other day. What's the song? And I quickly say, shut up. You dare not say, I know get money. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Instead of saying, I don't get money, say, I get too much money. Plenty money. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because if you say, I don't have, angels will block every road and to confirm your word, I don't have. So at the realm of imagination, we operate in the class of God. We operate in the class of God. Don't forget scripture said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. For we have the mind of Christ. For we have what? The mind of Christ is an anointed mind. It's not an ordinary mind. It's the mind that sees breakthrough. It's the mind that pictures open door. It's the mind that sees turn around. It's the mind that sees that blessing is coming. So if you can't see it, God is handicapped. God can't give it. So, our imagination brings us to the class of God. 
your mind has the capacity of the mind of Christ. God is a thinking God. And so one of the activities of the mind is to think out things. Think out new things. Anything your mind can capture, no devil can stop it. This they have begun to imagine. God is the one that said it, and nothing shall be restrained from them, which means nobody can stop it because they have imagined it. Kenneth Copeland said, whatever you can imagine in your mind, 50% of it is done. Whatever you can imagine in your mind, 50% of it is done. So if you fail in, my, in your mind, you will fail in your life. You are failing your family by failing your mind. Some fathers, they just come depressed. Oh, nobody wants to help me. <laughs> if you fail in your mind, you will fail in life. As a father, as a mother, as a student. Your breakthroughs, your family breakthroughs, they follow the direction of your thoughts. So be careful with your thoughts. No wonder scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Your breakthroughs, your open doors, your change of level, your family turn around, they follow your thoughts. That's why I pity people that think careless thoughts, foolish thoughts, evil thoughts. It will grow for you. It won't grow for me. Anything you are thinking grows for you, not for me. Because your mind is not in my own. You're, you are carrying your own, I'm carrying my own. That's why, hear me? When you allow evil thoughts to grow in your mind, you, de you demobilize the capacity of your mind from producing good results. The mind has power. Many of us don't know, but you are knowing it now. It's scriptural. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now, to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or do what? He said before they call, I will answer. While you are here speaking, I will perform. Now, have you ever stayed, you are thinking of a particular money and somebody brought the money to you? Did you tell the person? That's what we call the law of attraction. Your mind just attracted it. So you can just stay now. I pity any person that is using his mind to be thinking rubbish. You are reducing the strength and capacity of your mind from producing results. Success is crafted in the mind. Failure is crafted in the mind. Progress is crafted. Do you know your mind has what we call capacity? Do you know your mind has what we call stamina? Do you know your... When people fail to give up, they didn't give up in their mind. Their mind sustained them through the challenge. When people break down, they first of all break through in their... Break down in their mind. Because in their mind, they have just given up. So, every other thing should just fall. Your mind has power. Your mind is the center of hope. If you are hopeless in your mind, no matter how potent your faith is, it cannot produce results. Faith is important when the mind is hopeless. So if you want to see your family change levels, break through, if you want to break that limit where your family is now, it must begin in your mind. For with God, all things are possible. If God be for me, who can be against me? For with God, you begin to reason, Christ in me, the hope of glory. 
Can Christ be in me and I end up in shame? Can Christ be in me and I don't produce results in Lafia? God forbid. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Can Christ be in you as a father and your family end up in begging? No, God forbid. Can Christ be in you and you end up barren is a liar. Big lie. Bloody lie. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So, productive wise, you are productive. Fruitful wise, you are fruitful. Career wise, you must flourish. So I'd like you to hear this. Every family blessing is limited by the thinking pattern of the father and the thinking pattern of the mother. That's why, hear me and hear me well, there is nothing like a division. There is only what we call vision. You are not permitted to run your own vision. Wife is running his own vision. Husband is running his own vision. That's what we call division. Division. One shall chase a thousand. Two shall do what? Two shall do what? So the strength of pursuit is reduced when this one is thinking and pursuing his own. And when this one is thinking and pursuing his own. As a father, what you are supposed to do is to make your wife understand the vision and make her believe the vision. It's easy for her to run with you than for you to run alone. If you run alone, if you are going say anything, they go do it. That one concern you. I'm doing my own thing. But if the vision is understood, she will run with you. There is need for you to make her understand the vision. Where we are going. Where are we going? Because if you don't understand where your husband is going, you may be agitated to be spending careless. I want to buy this. I want to buy this. I want to buy this. That's why every year as I draw the vision or the goal or the dream, I say go through it. Anything you don't understand, mark it so that I will explain. Are you around saying now? We must run it together. Are you around saying now? That's how it's supposed to be. Because if you are not running the vision with her, there is every tendency she will want to do her own thing. She will want to do her own thing. So engaging your mind to break the limits over your family, tell yourself, this thing can't stop me. There is a place better than this place. I can't get there. And one thing I do, I read success stories of people that have attained that height, that have broken through in that area. People that have gotten results. Because it fuels your morale that it has happened before. So it must happen again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It has happened before, so it must happen again. So whatever God shows you in your mind, he releases power for fulfillment. He releases power. Now, I want you to understand this. God told Abraham, thy wife Sarah shall bring forth a son and his name shall be called what? Isaac. Abraham didn't understand that word. It came like a prophecy. That's why in prophecy people claim, claim, claim. I claim it. I claim it. I receive it. You are correct. Oh. But you see now, you now go and meditate it. Believe it. Picture it. 
So what did God do? He brought Abraham to the realm of imagination. That's how this one now became Mama Esther. You know Mama Esther? Mama Esther, stand up. You know her now? Anytime you call her Mama Esther, you are awakening the consciousness of this fact. Esther is on the way. True of us. No devil can change it. It's already imprinted. Are you sure she's not even pregnant? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God needed to bring Abraham to the realm of imagination. He said, Abraham, look up to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, as far as your eyes can see. He says, so will I give unto you. If you can't see it, God can't give it. Jeremiah was yes thou. He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou has well seen. He said, I will hasten my word to perform it. The father you see for your family, the father God take your family. Your family change levels according to how you see. Not how you pray. As far as your eyes can see. He took him again. He said from today, your name is no longer Abraham. Your name is now Abraham. Meaning father of nations. Mother of nations. Even when the angel said, according to the time of life, I will return. And the wife said, I shall bring forth. Scripture says, Sarah laughed. <laughs> Me too. In my old age. And the angel said, is there anything too hard for God to do? It was an angel that spoke. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Did it come to pass or not? Was age a limit? Age is a number. When God speaks, everything change. But for everything to change, God will want to fall, first of all, allow you to picture it. You must picture it. Because whatever you can picture can't appear in your future. You can't see it. Whatever you can picture can't appear in your future. Like I said before, man is limited by space. You are limited by space. If you want to go beyond where you are, now look beyond where you are. Do you know I can be in Abuja now with my mind? How did I get there? How did I get there? Anything you want to call it to? Somebody can be using car to be on his way to Abuja. But with my mind, I'm already in Abuja. Now, let me bring back that illustration. I think it will make it real. I used an illustration which I know works well. Who has traveled by air? You have traveled by air? Please come. You will know how this thing works. All this while you have been traveling by road, Abby. Driver, go stop. I want peace. <laughs> Stop, I want by chin chin. But the day you traveled by air, something happened. Am I correct? Before you travel, what were you thinking? <laughs> I was imagining how the journey will look like. You are imagining how the journey will look like? Yes, sir. You are imagining how you will sit in the plane? Yes, sir. In fact, <laughs> even before you enter the plane, you were already inside the plane. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Two of us. Before she entered the plane, me, plane. So she was imagining herself. 
<laughs> and she will carry her bag and follow every other person. She will climb. So this thing is real, eh? But the night before that day, she can't sleep. Day should break quick, quick. In fact, three o'clock, she don't go bath. And no one here say, I delay, miss that flight. <laughs> Am I saying something to somebody? What is happening? She's living in the consciousness, I am traveling by air. That's what your imagination do to you. Every time you are walking with your positive imagination, I am changing level. You are picturing your new realm. You are picturing your new reality. You are not yet there, but you are walking in the consciousness. But scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, as a man thinketh in his heart, before you know what's happening, so truly, truly, I will travel by air. He will go to his wardrobe. This one. People, they travel by air, and so they dress. <laughs> I must say something to somebody. He will bring this one. He will wear it. Spray perfume. Five o'clock. Driver. No waste time. The driver will appear. He said, truly, truly, I'm traveling by air today. The thing has been in the consciousness, but now she's walking in the realm of reality. I want to let you know, anything can change for your family. Amen. I say anything can change for your family. Amen. Your family finance can change. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So the realm of imagination is the realm of no limits. No limits. Say with me, no limits. No limits. No limits. No That's why when the enemy wants to bring war for you, he attacks your imagination. That's why scripture says, casting down every imagination and high thing that has exalted itself above the knowledge of God. It will distort your imagination, pollute your imagination, demobilize your imagination. Why? He doesn't want you to achieve what God has prepared for you. So in the realm of imagination, there is no limit. Do you know our imagination attracts our opportunities? Our imagination attracts our possibilities. Our imagination initiates our success. Now let me put this to us before we rise up to pray. If you carry a bad image, it will be difficult to change the picture. Am I saying the truth? Now let me explain. Who has um, how many of us use Kodak? Kodak camera. Wait and snap. Wait and take. You you did wait and take, eh? Now, what the pro, what the film shows is what? Negative. They call it negative, Abby. Now, if you look at the negative, does it look like you? Now when people look at you, what they see is wrong picture. Wrong picture. But when you print the negative, you see the real you. Now, if for example, now I'm wearing blue top, brown trouser. If I keep printing that negative, the only thing that will be coming out is blue and brown. Blue and brown. If I want to change the picture, what do I do? I change the top. And I change the trouser. Am I correct? Until you change your imagination, you cannot change your reality. Many people's limits have formed a stronghold for them. Please, I beg you, God himself is helpless. Until you change the picture, you cannot alter the future. So the beginning of breaking the limits, change the picture. What do I mean by changing the picture? Change the way you see your family. Do you know even 
naturally, when you see somebody to be bad, the person is not bad though. You are seeing the person to be bad. He will be showing you bad. Bad. Do you know why? That's the picture you have created. So to others, he will be showing them good. But to you that is seeing him bad, he will be showing you bad. 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 Until you change the picture, you can't alter the future. Please, I beg you, go back to your house. Look at your wife, your children. The picture is changing. I'm seeing glory. I'm seeing glory. I'm seeing breakthrough. You will build your house before August. If you are saying amen, say better amen. I'm talking to somebody. Now, Bill Winston carried a notion that he saw about his father and his mother. Now, he carried that mentality to his own marriage. And he began to relate with his wife with that same mentality. But one morning, say with me, one morning, the Holy Ghost told him, if you don't stop the way you are thinking, you will end the way your father ended. You will end the way your father ended. Do you know what he did? He started changing the way he was thinking and feeling about the wife. Anytime the wife comes, he will get irritated. She talks, he will fire back, fire back. So the thing started growing to the point that um, there's resentment. As a pastor, the thing is already boiling. So after that morning, he carried paper and biro. He was now painting a new picture about the wife. You are beautiful. You are awesome. You are the best woman. Now, words can change things. The moment he started telling her those things, her brain started beginning to correct. She started behaving like foolish. If you call your wife foolish, get ready, you go see foolish thing. Anything you talk, you go display them for you. Not because I marry you. You the grace. You too, you the grace. Because words fuel action. Words paint picture. Immediately he changed it. Oh honey, you look good. You look good. You look wonderful. She started behaving well. So he said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I will have just destroyed my marriage by thinking the way my father thinks. Now, I want you to know this. Just from that picture of the camera, now, if I print 1,000, the only thing I'll be seeing, Abby, the moment I change it, and I want it to look like this, I've altered the picture. This is the only thing I'll be seeing now. If you want your family to come out of stagnation, begin to paint a new picture. Begin to paint a new picture. Begin to paint a new picture. Because the new picture you paint for your family is the new realities that will meet you. It will be the new opportunities that will come your way. It will be the new thing that will be attracting helpers for your family. Now let me summarize it this way. Our imagination crafts, say with me, crafts our opportunities. The moment a picture is painted, your imagination goes to work. Your imagination goes to work. That's what we call creative thinking. Your imagination enters the realm of creative thinking. It's time to create out. It's time to fashion out the way out, the possibility, the open door, the people around you that can make that dream work. So um, our imagination is too powerful. Too powerful. That, no wonder can I take and say God has given you brain so that you can give him rest. And I tell you the truth and I lie not. Since I started operating it, I have never been stranded. I've never gotten to a point where I'm depressed. I must always think a way out. You think your way out of challenges. What are the steps of developing your imagination? Number one, 
set a definite goal for your family. Set a definite goal for your family. Make a decision that in 2018, this is where my family will be. And you are not seeing any other thing else. That's where my family will be. Do you know why? <laughs> you must be there. Because your imagination sets the pace for your new destination. Your imagination sets the pace for your new destination. Set goals. Some people always frown at setting goals. They say, if I set the goal, where is the money now? When God created the earth, what did he use? Was there Julius Beggar? Was there Setraco? His word. And the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the deep. And God said, let there be light. God said, let there be light because light has been existing in his mind. So what he was saying was what he was calling. Set goals. Now when you set goals, your imagination begins to work. How do I make it work? What do I have? What do I need to do? It will begin to craft. Begin to think. From thinking, ideas will be dropping. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the almighty showed him what to do. What to do. Steps to take. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the almighty showed him. God never leaves you stranded when you set goals. Now, I want you to shock you again. When you set goals that are bigger than you, God connects you to people that are bigger than you. I proved that in my life. There's something I would have said now, but I won't say it. I will only say the one you need to hear now. Every time you set higher goals, <laughs> hear me? Your mind is like a browser. It will begin to browse in the realm of the spirit. There is what we call connectivity. Before you know what is happening, God will now begin to connect you with helpers. How do I know? Is it scriptural? Yes. This, uh, the Ethiopian Enoch was thinking of Holy Ghost baptism. He was reading the Bible, was now thinking of Holy Ghost baptism. And God appeared to someone called who? Who? God told Philip in the dream, get down to Joppa. There is someone that needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It was the man's desire, it was his longing that connected Philip. And Philip entered the chariot and met him and asked him, Understand that word I read it? He said, how can I accept some man guide me? So whatever you begin to imagine and you are now writing as your goal, in the realm of the spirit, God begins to move people your way. That's what we call divine connectivity. Divine connectivity. Connect you with people that we bring that dream to. And when they come, you too, you will know. You will know. The smaller your goal, the smaller your helpers. The bigger your goal, the bigger your helpers. Number two. Steps to developing your imagination. Learn to concentrate. I've discovered that people that have secured vision, people that have secured dream, people that have secured where they are going, they focus their attention on energy on what they want to achieve. Every other thing doesn't matter again. Nothing catches their attention other than that they want to see come to pass. Do you know why people have time to gossip? Who knows? Do you know why people have time to gossip? They don't have anything occupying them. So Satan should occupy them. So Satan will need to occupy you. Since you don't have anything occupying you. When your vision is occupying you, 
You don't even know who passed by your front door. You don't even know who made noise. It's because you don't have anything doing. So Satan must give you what to do. And God said, occupy till I come. So something must occupy you. As I'm talking now, I lie not on this altar. Some people came to church on the basis of the gossip they had. Not on the message they want to hear. They came to confirm the gossip. You will confirm, oh? <laughs> While others are going up, be confirming gossip. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. As we get ready to pray. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Let me shock you. Whatever you are doing now operates on the, on the dynamics of opportunity. It may not be your lifetime dream, but it can usher you to where you are going to. It can bring you to where you are going to. But if you miss it, you increase your difficulty. That's how many fathers and mothers are saying, hey, I can't do this one, I can't do this one. Wait, the one you go do, they come. And lastly, how to develop your imagination, associate with successful people. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? But a companion of fools shall be what? Your imagination will always, say with me, always, always. be influenced by people who are higher than you in thinking, who are producing more better results than you. So it is good for you to look for people that are higher. Associate with people that can influence you. Positively. I pity any man, any woman that is hanging around people that are influencing them negatively. Your family will suffer. It's your family that will suffer. Any negative influence that you are carrying now is your family that will feed the torture. Because they are not helping you to rise, they are helping you to crash. Helping you to crash. That's a young man. Married, all his friends are divorcees. Four of them. You know, spirit is involved. No association leaves you empty. The spirit behind the person will follow you. So they began to like uh, ginger him, ginger him, wine him, wine him. Before you know what's happening, it was almost. In fact, he almost entered the thing. If my wife never mentioned it, ah, that guy will have gone. I said, see what they do, Amo. I gave it to him raw. I didn't say, is anything happening? I cannot pretend when evil is about to take place. I said, is anything happening? I just gave it to him. Bwah. It's like they remove veil. I said, what killed your father is about to kill you. And I said, it's true. It's true. Please, associate with people that influence you positively. Do you know why? If they are making progress, if they are succeeding, you will not be comfortable. Why? I can't be following these people and be going back. And be slacking behind. Success is contagious. Failure is also contagious. Decide the one you want to contact. Ideas are sparked off when you meet another higher thinker. When you meet people that think more better than you, they spark off something in you. They spark off something in you. Hear me? Your family will not be on the same spot that they were last year. 
If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. So your principal assignment today, if you have never done it before, you go back. I review my goals every month. Every month. Because every month I see something new. Every month I see something new. I review it. I adjust it positively. Because when God shows it to you, it's already done. You now, begin, you now begin to develop yourself and commit yourself to working it out. You see, some families this year will build estates. Yeah. Somebody say, Pastor Nalafia with you. <laughs> I repeat it. Some families this year will build estates. Rise up to your feet. Him that is joined to the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Are you joined to God? I want you to lift up your voice. But before you pray, picture your family in your mind. Where do you want to see your family? You must change the old picture. Where you are working is not your problem. Your mind is your problem. Your mind is your biggest problem. The people around you, they are never your problem. You are your problem. You are your biggest problem. Because whatever you have not carried in your mind cannot stay. It's only what you have carried in your mind that can stay. I want you to picture your family. Our family level must change. We must buy a new car. We must build a new house. Suffering is coming to an end. We will no longer live in debt. However, God will do it. He said he makes a way where there seems to be no way. Waymaker, I count on you. But I make my decision. My family will never be on the same spot again. Lift up your voice and make that your prayer right now. Make that your prayer. My family will not be on the same spot. I vow a vow against failure. I vow a vow against stagnation. I vow a vow against mediocrity. I vow a vow against frustration. My family must break limits. We must break new limits. We must enter new realms of success. New realms of progress. New realms of accomplishment. New realms of manifestation. New realms of favor. New realms of progress. Lift up your voice and begin to declare. Say it a minute. God said I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Don't reduce your family to pity. Begin to think of something good, something glorious. Who doesn't want to help you is not a problem. Take your eyes off that person. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From where cometh my help? He said, my help cometh from God. The maker of the heavens and the earth. Lift up your voice. Begin to declare, no more stagnation for my family. No more limitation for my family. No more suffering for my family. My family is breaking forth. Breaking forth on every side. Breaking forth with progress. Breaking forth with success. Breaking forth with liftings. Breaking forth with accomplishment. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Even the woman with the issue of blood, she had to break protocols. She said in her heart, if only I will touch, 
not that if they give me a chance to touch. Now hear me. If you are waiting for who will give you and your family a chance, nobody will give you. You will take your chance by yourself. She said, if only I will touch. And immediately she said, if only I will touch, opportunity was created. Now don't tell me they didn't see her. Don't tell me they didn't see her. They didn't see the stains on her body. But it was not an issue because she has made up her mind. I want to touch. And she pierced. Scripture says she came in a press and touched him. And touched him. Even when Jesus was saying, somebody touched me. And the woman finally appeared. They didn't even say, ah, she's a leper. She's carrying a disease that does not allow people. They couldn't talk. They couldn't talk. What have you made up your mind to see for your family? Because whatever you see, that's what God will do. I want you to declare it. Lord, beginning from today, my family will flourish like a palm tree. My family will enjoy favor. My family will experience open doors. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it. From today, my family will not know hardship again. My family will not know suffering again. Declare what you want to see. God is a good God. He's too faithful. He has never failed before. Lift up your voice. Declare it. My family will experience new glory. This will be the least. The least blessing. This will be the least favor we will ever experience from today. Greater success, greater fulfillment, greater dimensions of progress, greater dimensions of glory. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you know that you are not born again. You must break that limit. Until Jesus is in your heart, there is no chance for your life and for your family. When Jesus gains entrance, that is the beginning point of your family change of story. You want to make it right with Jesus right now, wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest as I'm doing right now and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me wherever you are, congratulations. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come right now. I want to pray with you. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. Come, come, come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus. accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. The guilt of their past, they are rolled away. Every cause, every legal hold the enemy had over this life, by the blood of Jesus and by the anointing, that yoke is destroyed. From today, your life will enjoy goodness. Your life will enjoy the blessings of God. As this oil come upon you, the yoke of the wicked over your life is shattered. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The yoke of the wicked over your life is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. No more shame, no more reproach, no more depression, no more suffering. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hand together for Jesus for them. Just turn and follow this man right now.
Turn and follow this man right now. God bless you.